Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are, depending on what time of day I upload this. This is my Bema reselling. Hope you're all well. Um, so this, I think, will officially, yeah, officially be my second upload to YouTube, but unofficially is about the fourth or fifth um, video I've actually recorded. I have, yeah, there's there's three or four. There's quite a lot of cats, sorry. There's, uh, we have two cats and it's the time of year where there is hair absolutely everywhere, including the thing I'm using to film on. Um, so I've uploaded three or four videos that I haven't even thought about kind of editing or um, putting on YouTube yet. So they really are... When I upload them, it's going to be a bit strange because they're going to say, this is my second video, this is my third video, when really it's going to be one more because this one is, I'm planning on being a short one, a short little discussion on a topic that kind of gets brought up a lot with reselling. Um, it's something I've had kind of conversations with people around quite a bit. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping there's a couple of pickups here um, but the manner of the pickups is the discussion kind of thing. So I have been on Facebook Marketplace. Um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I'm desperately, desperately trying to cut down on um, getting more stock, really, at the moment. I've got far too much. The whole spare room of our house is taken up with just boxes and boxes of stuff that most of it isn't even listed at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so really the wife is is not happy um she wants a spare room back as a slight aside i've looked at the prices of storage lockers and that kind of thing and they are extortionate i can't justify spending 50 pound per week the best one i found was 95 pound per month and i think that's still a lot of money um yeah so at the moment i'm kind of persevering i'm using whatever space we've got in the house to store stuff but yeah, it's not going to last much longer. Um, yeah, there's when there's an unhappy wife in the house, it's it's not easy to get around. So I'm definitely going to have to try and sort things out. So for that reason, I'm trying to kind of cut down on stock, start to list more, which is something I really really need to do. Especially now I've got these couple of weeks free before I go back to work. I really need to be listing. Um, but as you know, it's uh, buying the stocks, the fun part. It's the it's the listing that's the not quite as fun part. So anyway, so yeah, I've been on Facebook Marketplace. I just like to have a look kind of during the day. And for some reason, there's been a lot of um, a lot of free things on there at the moment. Yeah, so if you'll collect, you can have whatever it is for free. So it's a, me being a bit, uh, yeah, a bit kind of facetious really because the wife has said, don't buy any more stock and I'm getting around it by not buying any more stock. It's all free. But this is the issue that resellers, I'm sure many of you resellers have had, people asking you whether you feel it's right to take someone's free stuff and then sell it online for a profit. Now, obviously I have been in reselling not that long. It's only been a few months, so I'm quite new to this. But when all through my kind of life, through college and things like that, um, I've always felt a little bit strange about taking people's free stuff anyway. Um, but especially when it comes to selling it on for a profit, I do have kind of a, a conflict of interest. I like that it's free and that all the profit is kind of yours, but I don't like that it's someone's free stuff that you're taking with the intention of selling on. But my whole outlook on it is that... Um, the person who's given it for free obviously just wants rid of it. They just want it to go. Now, to them, it doesn't really matter whether it goes to a home that's going to use it constantly to someone who's going to try and sell it on, to someone who's going to give it to someone else kind of thing. They just want it out of their house. And I've had this before. We've given kind of lawnmowers, strimmers away, things like that. And whilst I know I could probably get a little bit of money for the things that I want to give away for free, it's the hassle of... A lot of the people that tend to give things 
away for free aren't au fait with eBay or Spock or Gumtree or anything like that. It's kind of new to them. So they go on Facebook Marketplace and they say, look, this is free, come and collect it. And I've done it before. We've, I've done it with lawnmowers, strimmers, yeah, like I say. And it's just the ease of someone will come and get it if it's free, most likely. And then it's just out of the way then. It's out of the way. And actually, we've got a, a lawnmower for, for free pickup on Spock at the moment because we don't need the lawnmower and um yeah i might be able to get i might be able to squeeze 20 pound out of someone but for the sake of them coming to collect it and organizing transport and that kind of thing they might as well just take it for free so that is my view on it i was just wondering what the reselling community in general's view on it was um i know i've been watching nick and andrea hills at the moment and they've been to a couple of oh, well up to a jumble sale i think a jumble trail they call it um not long ago and I know that towards the end of that jumble trail people were just so desperate to get rid of stuff that they were just leaving it outside and saying please take it and I know that Nick kind of spoke about not wanting to take everything there but only taking what was kind of yeah what he felt he was he was right to do kind of thing not taking it all um so I just thought it was quite an interesting kind of discussion topic really that uh yeah uh, that seems to be whenever I've spoken to someone about kind of reselling online, that is always their go-to is how do you go about taking people's free stuff? The other one obviously is how do you feel buying stuff from charity shops and then selling it online for a profit? But I always get around that one by saying resellers never go to charity shops to haggle or make a bargain or anything like that. They go to charity shops and we pay the prices that the charity shop wants. It's not our fault as a reselling community that, they don't research it enough in charity shops. And to be honest, if they asked the prices that you can get online in charity shops, they'd probably find that their sales would be completely dead anyway. I've been to a few charity shops where I think, well, that is the going rate for that item, but you just don't buy it in a charity shop because it's, you know, the whole point of charity shops is it's supposed to be slightly cheaper and th that kind of thing. So I think it's quite a good system with the charity shops. We pay what the charity shops want. They get what they wanted out of it. And they keep that consistent kind of money ticking in, ticking in. If it was, if they were pricing everything as high as they possibly could go, I think their sales would really bomb. And obviously, their their kind of perspective is, it's better to if we can get seventy five percent of worth of the value of an item, it's better to do that consistently than it is to get one hundred percent of an item inconsistently, which I understand. So, without further ado, yeah, that that was the kind of discussion topic. I'm really interested in hearing what you guys think of that. Um, I hate it when people call everyone guys, so I don't know why I've just done that. I'd like to see what everyone, the reselling community, think about that. Um, but I will show you what I've picked up today. There was actually one last night and two today, um, and they were all completely free. So I'll just show you these real quick, and then, uh, yeah, if you'd add to the discussion, it would be great. I just think uh, it's part of the reselling community on eBay that I really, really like, is that these kind of discussions happen and everyone's kind of close knit and yeah. So I just wanted to put it out there, see what other people think. So I will show you the first item. So the first item is literally a bag of books. Um, it's a bag of children's books. So actually I nearly missed out on this. Um, this was on Facebook Marketplace as were all these things. And I'd messaged as you do there's the the automatic message comes up saying hi whatever the seller's name is um is this still available so i just send that i send that to all the ones i'm kind of interested in and then narrow it down from there um so someone else had agreed to pick this up but they hadn't give the the seller a time um so i think i organized this what day are we on now we're on wednesday today so i organized this monday night is when i noticed this on facebook marketplace Someone else had said to them, yes, I'll have it. I'll come and collect it tomorrow morning. They hadn't given them the time. And this happens a lot on Facebook Marketplace. You'll, you'll get in kind of contact with someone who says, yeah, I've got an interested party, but I'm not entirely sure when they're coming to collect it. You know, all these things that they don't really say. The, the people must just message and say, yes, I'll have it sometime tomorrow. So the, the lady who was selling these said... Um, you know, I'll give them, because this was quite early on Monday night, so it was about six o'clock, I'd imagine. Um, so she said, yes, um, I've got someone interested. 
They've said they'll come and collect it tomorrow. If I don't hear by them for the rest of the night, knowing what time they'll come, um, I'll message you tomorrow morning saying they, they, they're yours. So anyway, the next morning came, um, the person hadn't got back in contact with them about a time, so I got a message about 10 o'clock in the morning saying, come and collect them whenever you can, they're kind of yours. So there was twofold on this. Um, I noticed there's a lot of little mist books, which tend to sell well if you bundle them together. So there are a few more somewhere, there's another one there. Um, there's a few Christmas books, Christmas children's books. This one has some magnetic matching books. So some of these are really early year books. Um, and then there's these red nose readers as well, which I need to look into because they seem to be just from a quick um, search. Maybe that's something that can be interesting. There's quite a lot of stuff that isn't worth much in this bag, to be honest. Um, there's a couple of dinosaur books and things like that. So what really, yeah, what really intrigued me was the Mr. Men books and a few Christmas books so obviously it's not Q4 yet but it will soon be here and I like to start I'm thinking I'm going to start listing kind of Christmassy stuff towards the end of September um, so I'm trying to make little bundles of so I've got a DVD collection well I've got a few DVD bundles of Christmas films I've got some Christmas CDs that I'm going to put on there I've got some Christmas earrings that I'm going to put on there as well. So I've got about 10, 10 pairs of those um, and some candles as well. Some kind of um, Christmassy smelling Yankee candle, the, the really small ones. I can't remember what the term is for them now. Um, yeah, so that was kind of what interested me. Things like this can always be kind of stocking fillers or things that people will buy for their children to take into school, that kind of thing. Most of this in here isn't really worth much from a quick look, um, which I didn't think it would be. And I think that's the reason that they were kind of giving them away for free was because they really knew that there wasn't much of value in here, to be honest. But um, we're quite active with a primary school. So and there's a couple of these like feely, touchy books, but I mean, with them being pre-owned and things like that, they're not in great condition. But so a couple of these I think will go in the bin. Um, but we're quite active with a local primary school, so anything that really isn't worth much um, from here can go to the children in that primary school because it'll be something that they'll enjoy um, and they can stick it on the bookshelves and have it in the reading corner and stuff. So I really don't think there's going to be much money in these apart from the Mr. Men books and a couple of the Christmas things. So that was the first one. And to be honest, this was quite far out of my way as well. Um, it was about 12 miles away-ish so it did take a little bit of time getting there so all in all maybe this wasn't the the thing that I should have pursued really but I'm I'm quite happy to even if it comes down to it I'm quite happy to donate all these to the local primary school because yeah it's in these trying times and budget cuts and things like that couple of bucks like that won't go and miss in a school they'd be quite thankful for it I'd imagine so if it if the worst comes to the worst then they can all get donated to the school which I still might do anyway to be honest um, but I will have a little look at what's in there and then uh, I tend to if I get something for free like this and there's a lot of things um, I do try to tend to donate some of it to some kind of good cause so either to a charity shop or to a school or to a thing like that I've, I've donated some things to a care home before um so yeah i try to try to do a little bit of good with it but that is probably just a little part of me that still isn't fully convinced by taking the free stuff um but it's quite nice to give back anyway so that is the first pickup so the Second pickup, well actually this was the last pickup, but I'm going to take a second here, is a HP Photosmart A516. So this is like a compact, it, was, it is a compact photo printer. So it's just a, an easily transportable printer, really. Um, so it easily prints 10 to 10 by 15 centimeter photos almost everywhere. So yeah, it's one of those kind of light, it's not very light considering it's supposed to be portable. It is quite a lot of bulk in it really so I saw this this was even further out of my way than the books Um, this took me 20 minutes easily to get to the place that this was 
So really by the time I've used, you know, take fuel off, get in there. Um, this, this isn't free for me at all, to be honest. But I was happy to travel it. I did a little bit of research on this and on eBay these are going for quite consistently as well. 20 to 25 to 30 in some instances. So to get it for free, um, the lady who was selling it said it's only been used once as far as she knows. Then it was put back in the box with everything that was supposed to be in there. Um, I'm not sure why there's two charges in there, so obviously there must be a little bit of an error there. But um, I obviously haven't, this. I've literally got back from this about 10 minutes ago from picking this up. So I haven't had a chance to, to check it out at all to see if it works. She's under the impression it still works because she says she hasn't had it for that long. She used it once, put it back in the box. So there's no reason why it shouldn't work, but obviously I need to check that it turns on. Um, the paper for it, she didn't have any paper to, that comes with it because I did ask even to, to pay some money for some paper really because to fully check that this is working, I need to print something out with it. She didn't have any paper, so I'm going to have to look at getting some paper for it to check that it 100% prints correctly. Um, but for the moment, I can turn it on, see if it turns on, get a good idea what, what it kind of looked like inside, because it should just be like a normal printer that you can open up, see the ink and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I can get a good idea whether all the working parts seem to work, but I do need to get, even if it's just one or two pieces of the paper for it, but I'm pretty sure you can get the packs online for this for not very expensive so yeah so really this depends on whether it works but for free obviously you've got to factor in a little bit of the fuel cost but for free i'm not going to be absolutely devastated if this doesn't work like i would be if i paid five or ten pound for this or for a car boot or something like that you know this that it's free is uh not the end of the world so that is the other upside of free things is that you're not so disappointed when they don't work. Um, but yeah, there should be there should be no reason why this wouldn't work. Um, and yeah, I spoke to the lady a little bit about it. This was another thing where someone else had said that they'd have it. Uh, didn't give them a time, didn't give them a day that they were going to pick it up. They just kind of wanted them to hold it indefinitely for them, which I think is a bit strange. So... Um, yeah, so she'd made the decision last night that I could have this, but with various things, I didn't manage to go and pick it up until, until this evening. But for free, yeah. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you can find these for cheap enough, they are worth picking up. There's not a great deal of money in them, but I'll, I'll obviously aim. If it does all work, I'll aim for the highest highest I can go for. So I'll probably go for maybe $34.99 with free shipping. Um, like I say, it's a bit heavy, so that'll definitely go with Hermes as a well that has to be like it says a let's say a weight on it also it's 1.79 kilograms so it'll go with, with hermes as a less than two well one to two kilogram box um so that'll cost me five pounds total with the signature and everything and if it sells for 34.99 hermes works it they have free insurance up to 20 pound and then it's kind of whatever on a sliding scale after that so it'll be something like 65p to make that up to 35 pound insurance and it'll be 90p for the signature so all in all it probably costs about five pound to ship this but if i'm getting 35 pound for it then that's 30 pound pure profit there so that's the second one and i'll just show you the final one so the final pickup is this canon printer um i did have the model written down somewhere so it's a it's on the pixma line anyway so I give this a quick Google, a quick eBay when I um, first saw it. Got really excited, um, quite wrongly actually. So the Pixma line of Canon printers. So this is a printer and a scanner, but the Pixma line, there seems to be some kind of industrial one. So I only had a quick glance at the picture of this on Facebook Marketplace. I had Canon Pixma in my mind, um, put it into eBay and then was couldn't believe that there was some selling for almost like a hundred pound 90 pound um some were even going for a hundred hundred or more i thought no way um so it turns out that on the pixma line there's actually a few different models this is more the home version the one that was selling for a hundred plus is kind of more of the industrial office type 
um, yeah, it's a lot bigger. It's a, it's a slightly different shape actually. So I should have looked at pictures of this more before I went and got too excited. But yeah, it's a slightly different shape. It's got, um, I think on here, it's got like a kind of scoop and then it comes out a little bit more on both sides that is. But obviously that's a little bit more of an industrial one. But this um, is the home version. But to be honest, it's, yeah, they go for decent prices. They go for about 30 or 40 pound, depending on condition. Um, this one's got quite a lot of dust on it. To be honest, the the seller, the lady was really open with this. Um, she said she has no idea whether it works. It's been in their garage, she said, for quite a few months now. Um, it did work when they bought it. They bought it brand new. So they've they bought it, they set it up, they threw away the box. They used it a few times um, and then realised that they didn't actually need it out or something. So they've put it in the garage away so it's been yeah it's been gathering dust for that whole time so she was honest she didn't say that it worked she didn't know um they hadn't tested it before they'd listed it that's why they listed it for free also sorry so the model number is the mg3550 um so again i did pick this up i picked this up this morning actually but it's been sat in the back of the car all day um i've been doing various things so i haven't had a chance to check that this one works either I've got plain paper. Um, I need to check whether the ink situation is with it, whether it'll actually print something. Um, but I can test that it's all working, all turning on. These is not the end of the world if this doesn't work because for spares or repair, they go for like 15, 20 pound, um, depending on what kind of thing is wrong with it. But obviously I'd need to probably need a little bit more advice on what was wrong with it and then I'd be able to figure it out myself. But anyway, it's one of those free things. This was about a two minute detour from where I was, um, yeah, to where I go to the post office. This was about two minutes detour away from that. So I was going to the post office anyway. So this doesn't really owe me anything in petrol either. So it's not as though I can even take, you know, say that this cost me a lot in fuel because it didn't. It was exactly where I was going, which is what I, I love those kind of deals on Facebook Marketplace where it's, you're going there anyway, it's just a small detour and then you're getting what you want. Um, so yeah, so again, this was free. Uh, so really, I'm not too bothered if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, I've just got to kind of take it to the tip and that's it. Or go through the rigmarole of listing it for spares and repair and kind of finding out what, what is wrong with it, why it won't work. Um, but in general, considering it's been in someone's garage for a bit, it's not in bad condition at all. There's a couple of scrapes on top, but nothing serious. I think that's just where something's been stored on top of it. And then it's just the case of getting some dust and a bit of grime off really. So it'll scrub up quite nice. Um, whether it works is, is a kind of another thing, but I'll obviously keep you updated with it. But um, yeah, three free things. Bit of profit, I'm sure, in some of them. Um, maybe not quite so much in the others, but for free, it's uh, it's worth keeping an eye on Facebook Marketplace for the free things. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I did try to make it quite short, but we're now on 23 minutes, so I'm incapable of keeping these short. Again, as I always say, but you won't have seen it, you've only seen one video. Um, I will be looking at getting a new kind of setup soon that isn't this couch. It's very Ashens kind of situation where you can only see my hand on the couch um but at the moment yeah i've only got the phone camera so i'm very limited to how i can film these things but i have got a gopro somewhere i really need to kind of just get it out get a head mount for it which will make the picking and packing videos that i plan to do i promise i plan to do those a little bit easier but for the moment um i'm just trying to show you kind of what i pick up and hopefully you kind of appreciate that uh, it's all done a little bit on the fly um it's actually got a bit of the sticky tape on it still from when it was new. So obviously this side panel has never been open. I'm not sure entirely what is in that side panel, but it was just a bit interesting that they've, yeah, they haven't opened all of those. Um, yeah, so this is, this will go as officially my second video, but actually chronologically, this is going to be like my fifth video, but I will get around to uploading them all eventually. 
I'm planning on making some kind of intro, um, getting a bit more editing. At the moment, I'm just editing these kind of on the fly, pausing the video, getting the next thing ready, that kind of thing. There's not much editing involved, but I'm going to look at editing far more and, um, yeah, hopefully a little bit more professional. But for now, this is it. So thank you for watching. Um, take care and happy hunting.